feel like a bandito. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Neff Learns Flare and Tell Stories. I was pushing this 25th anniversary thing pretty hard, and in that, I didn't want to necessarily look, talk about my experience. I just wanted to talk about the places that I've been. So we talked about Seattle, New York, we talked about Los Angeles, and now I want to talk about Houston. I do like to bring in new pieces of flair every time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something combining with two things that I've done before. So double flip and the over the shoulder. Yeah, here goes. I can't say enough about what I learned in Houston. Houston was a new market for me. And like any new market, it's got its own history and its own development. It turns out, they don't always really care what strangers have to say about how things should be done. You know, at this point, I had been all throughout the process of this whole cocktail thing. And it's never nice to come into somebody's town and just say, this is how it's done. This is not manners. I tried not to do that. I'm not gonna get into the origin story of the bar, but it's called the Cottonmouth Club. And I opened it with a guy named Mike Raymond two years ago, and it's where I am now. So, Houston, as a town, taught me a lot. Because I'd had a whole career, you know? And it was more or less fancy, depending on how you judge these things. Had not included a lot of flair, so. If nothing else, I can put this on the list of things that I'm learning in Houston. I didn't come because I had a lot of connections here. I had one, really. That's the guy that I opened the bar with. All I wanted to do was look at the existing cocktail and bar scene in a city and just add my voice to it, you know? I wanted to open a bar around uh, in, in a city that was big enough, that had enough people, but wasn't the cities that I'd been in already. And Houston was, was perfect for that, you know? It's, it's the fourth... Uh, biggest city in the country. Reminds me a lot of LA, actually. Those kind of statements don't make you popular with Houstonians, but that's what I think. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a driving culture. You know, it's spread out. Has a kind of a secretly great food scene, and it has a secretly great bar scene, because it's not, ooh, that was like a flip thing. <laughs> because it's not necessarily kind of uh, the city that gets the most press, but you know, I had a really strong community of people who uh, who were super passionate about what they did, and and they had uh, they had a lot of stories to tell, and so I was excited to be a part of it. This just needs to be littler. Look, you just go pop. Let's see if I can do it the left hand. Boom. The fact is, I didn't know a whole lot about the city. I didn't know about its neighborhood. I didn't know about its people. I didn't know about its bars. It's not the most ideal way to approach a new community. You know, kind of, kind of walking in not knowing everything about them that you can. I'm gonna try the new spoon thing. It's just a flourish. You go down, you throw it around. Oh, it's more of a feeling. Not ideal, and I didn't, I, I didn't know, I didn't know uh, as the neighborhoods as well as I could've, and I didn't know the people really at all. But I really wanted to learn. So this one goes like that. So this one would go like that. The bar, which is called the Cottonmouth Club, is in, in downtown Houston, which is kind of like a nightlife dis district. You know, not, not the fanciest one. You know, there, there are fancier ones, and there are more popular places that more different kinds of people go. But it's got a lot of great stuff. It's a lot of people, a lot of, uh, a lot of business during the week, a lot of tourism. It's central. There were also, there's also a lot of bars. And the great thing about that is there's a lot of bars that you can walk to. It's one of these neighborhoods, which is, which is rare in a town um, that is a town kind of established on being spread out. Uh, you can walk to a d bunch of different places. And people did, and I certainly did, and so I just kept going to bars. There was a fair amount of kind of stranger danger that I got when I came to town, which I didn't really expect. And I don't mean from the public. I mean, the public was fine. You know, I, 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 I wanted to push this idea of a bar that did world-class cocktails, but not in an environment that made it seem like that. You know, I always like those bars that are in those middle spaces that are, you know, comfy and more about other things. So music or whatever someone's really into, but also you can get a kick-ass cocktail. Because my contention always has been, it's all that environmental stuff that really makes the drinks better. And, you know, saying that and trying to train people in that was very different than what the focus of training had been, not just in Houston, but lots of places. You know, the, the cocktail community had gotten to the point where you have to train lots of people who haven't necessarily, sorry. Uh, you have to train lots of people who haven't necessarily done your thing, so training was so focused on, on cocktails. A lot of the training I wanted to do was creating bartenders specifically first, and then taking that and then applying that to how cocktails were made. But it's not a common way to approach it. So it made it difficult to, to especially with the first round of staff, and I, and I feel bad about that because 
I'd made some assumptions coming to Houston which were not correct. And almost all of them were based on my own stuff. I had not really done this kind of thing before because I was opening a bar in a city that I didn't live in. And, and it was a bar that was based specifically on a kind of philosophy that I had been thinking about and talking about for years, but no one else around me had really been involved in. So this is also the first bar that I opened uh, with a bunch of people that were strangers to me. In other markets, I could kind of, you know, I had enough people around me that had worked with me enough times that it wasn't all brand new to all of them. You know, I could bring in some people that I'd worked with before and said, and even if it was for a day or two, it makes a big difference. You know, you have someone who has this idea that they thought about too, and then, they, you know, it just kind of like spreads it out a little bit more. Uh, we didn't have that. It was all fresh. And they were waiting for me to do what everyone else had done, which is saying, like, when are we going to talk about cocktails? And I'm looking at them saying, I've been talking about cocktails. And they said, no, you've been talking about the mindset of people who are professional housebreakers and how that affects their peripheral vision. And you've been talking about the neurology of people who go to music shows and how it makes their, their heartbeats match up. You've been talking about all kinds of other stuff. We just need to know what the drinks are. That was kind of the beginning. And you know, it was frustrating for them, for sure. And for me, it wasn't as frustrating as it was confusing. I thought I was being clear, but I was not being clear at all. I wasn't recognizing that, that I needed to give them a level of what they wanted. Specifics, take this much lime juice, this much simple syrup, and this much rum, and that's a daiquiri. I went all the way to the other side and said, let's talk about the purpose of a daiquiri, and then eventually we'll kind of wiggle back around to the fact that you can make one. Not the right way to go. That's one of the things I learned from Houston. And I think it, it would not have been possible in another market, you know, because it needed to be of a size and it needed to have its own history. But it also had to have enough people who kind of had their own way in things. So I could then look at what I was doing and then adjust my way to what theirs was. It just took me a while to figure out what that way was. You know, and at the same time, I was living in Los Angeles. So I was commuting again. But, you know, I was kind of burning it from both ends. Get on a plane and come out for three or four days and like build, 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 hammer, hammer, hammer. And at the same time, going back and trying to, you know, remain a father and screw up a lot of my relationships. So it was hard to get the insight that I needed into the town when all of my time here was spent just really just working as hard as I could. So it's like, okay, I'm here for four days. Like, let's get this done. So we just sit there and from, you know, dawn to dusk, just build, 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 hammer, hammer, hammer. You just go, like, do all the stuff. And, you know, thinking about how does it live in the community and then going as, as much as I can to any bar I could walk to, really, because the first neighborhood I needed to know was my own, which was downtown. It was, uh, it, it, you know, it was a lot. The thing that I expected, though, because of what I was known for is in the in the bar world, I was the one who, who opened bars for bartenders. My programs have always been bartender focused as far as the people who make them. There's a lot of freedom, a lot of leeway. It is definitely welcoming to other bartenders who come in, for sure. I mean, basically, I just try to make places that I want to hang out in. And I'm nothing but a bartender, really. So I expected that idea to be hard for the public to really get on board with, but easier for the bartenders to understand. And it turned out I was wrong. It was the opposite. What I got was people trying to figure out what I was doing here. I, I got this question a lot in the beginning, which is, why are you here? And some of that question was, was a real question. Like, honestly, like, why'd you come to Houston? Uh, but some of it seemed more like, what are you doing here, pal? You know, I didn't have the greatest answer, but it goes back to that stranger danger thing. You know, I, I had not introduced myself well, I think. Shit, I don't know. You know, maybe it was, I, I was not clear of my intentions. My intentions were really nothing but to open a really good bar in a city that I wanted to get to know. It was pretty much that simple. And to me, a bar is so much a community-based place, so I needed to build a place and then build a community around it. I usually start with bartenders there, so it was a little bit of, it was a little difficult in the beginning because the people that I was most trying to reach were the people who were still trying to figure out like like what it is that I was trying to do and why. And again, it's not just me. It was it was it was me and and, and my partner and and all the people who worked here. It was it, it took it took us a while to find to find out how to work together correctly. But there's a couple things that happened, and those were lessons too. You know, one of the things that happened was when I was in town, which was increasing. Like I was here more and more. When I was in town, I started to work more shifts myself. And that's a good way to kind of feel the pulse and the heartbeat of a neighborhood. It started to develop my own clientele, so my own regulars and people who, who didn't know anything about anybody. They're just like, you're the bartender guy at this bar that we like. And one of the biggest lessons that we learned, because now it's we, right? Now I, now I started to build a team of people who were willing to stick around long enough to, to, to kind of understand what I was going for, intellectualize it themselves, and then kind of 
understand its value because it's not that my ideas were the ones that had the value it's it's a, a specific kind of action that a bartender can do and a, a specific way of approaching your shifts and your job and all that stuff that uh, kind of eventually just makes it more fulfilling right for you for your guests and when it's more fulfilling there's more money you know there's more control you feel better about your job like all that stuff and I, I, I started building a team of people who said uh, that we like this this is what we want to keep doing and you know had the time to train them enough and train them properly you know and training is still is it's still the number one priority but it still doesn't look like anything else that people are used to you know training is something that happens after every shift and you know we try to work side by side as much as possible we talk we talk and we talk I mean training sounds like conversation there's a reason for that I I was never smart enough to be able to sit and just kind of dump out everything I needed everybody to know and I was never a good enough writer to be able to uh, to be able to write it all down in a way that I could just give a book to people and say like read that and then you're good you you understand it now it's just not it's it's kind of like learning flair you can learn the motions of it but you have to practice for a purpose and a reason. And then you gotta do it enough times so till it just becomes second nature and there's things that you don't need to think about anymore. But also, it never stops. Because as soon as you get one thing down, there's another thing to learn. And if... So those ideas of kind of starting with philosophy and time and practice, uh, it takes a little getting used to. And it takes a, it takes a while to understand what, what it's for. and you know, and it took me a while to really kind of look at the people who were working with me and look at the people who were coming uh, to the bar and look at the bartenders of the community and put all that stuff together and say, okay, where's my part in it? You know, what, 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 is, what is my best use? What kind of bar should I have? It did it. Whew, saved it. And I didn't know. That's, a, that's the nature of learning new things and, and being able to keep a learner's mind about it is another thing that Houston gave me a lot of practice in. I think it's like this. I was for, is it two? I think it's two. It's another very valuable lesson that Houston taught me is reminding me that learner's mind is something uh, I need to foster as well. Because it's not like I would have said, I know everything, but it's one thing to understand you don't know everything. It's another thing entirely, kind of like this, uh, to be shown on a daily basis. But you know, I make it sound like it was hard and it was hard in, in a lot of ways because, you know, trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work is, is not always, uh, it's not always easy, especially when you're dealing with other people, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's staff, there's partners, there's managers, there's all kinds of things. So, you know, we, we definitely, we definitely uh, kind of learned as we went. You know, it wasn't all just, you know, hard lessons. I started doing something which I needed to do, which was uh, really understanding the city and that uh, requires a guide. First one who was very, very kind and for whom uh, I have a lot of gratitude was a woman named Lindsay Ray, who at the time ran a very wonderful bar called Grand Prize. She knew a lot of people that I knew. You know, she'd spent time in different cities. She was kind of involved in the whole national scene. You know, we had friends in common. She, she, she would show up after, you know, I met her and she came in, which was great. And after a while, she would show up and be like, have you ever been to this place? And I was like, no, have you ever been to that place? No. And she, she, one day she showed up and said, come on, let's like, I'm, I'm taking you around. And she did. She took me to all these wonderful kind of institution places that I had heard about I'd never been to. And so, which, which had a couple of effects. You know, I got to see what it is that all the people were talking about. I got to get a much better understanding for the city in which I was trying to make a bar and I got to, uh, I got to meet people. I'm gonna try it with a, with a double flip. So flip and then flip. Close. Uh, I got to meet people. And I got to meet them in a context which was not just a, here's that guy in this new bar. It was, here's that guy who's coming uh, with, with a pal and someone that, that everybody knew and respected. And like that, I mean, and that makes uh, an enormous amount of difference. And again, the fact that she was so uh, so insistent that it needed to happen and was so willing to take me around and show me things, Lindsay became a friend and a friend for which, uh, ah, <laughs> a friend uh, that I value. And uh, she's been very open and generous and, and such a big booster in the city and helped me understand it so much better. So that was, that was amazing. And it still is, really. 
now owns a bar called Two Headed Dog in Houston. Uh, great bar. When it's time to go back to bars, go back to that one too. The second group that taught me a lot really was was the community in general. I mean, they were all pretty they were pretty tight knit, but they were tight knit in a way that starting to come naturally. Oh. But they were tightly knit in a way that you find when people have known each other for a long time and have all worked together. And that's good and bad. It's good because you know who people are and you know what they can do and you have that sense of, of really strong bonding. And it's hard for a stranger to come in and just come into the middle of that. But the other part of it is it makes it very difficult to uh, outrun your past. And I found that a lot. Um, and that actually helped me really kind of start to figure out what my role could be. Yeah, it gave me, it gave me a new idea about how I might fit into that community. You know, something that I might provide that, that, that uh, not everybody had. Because the thing that made me the stranger is what I think uh, made me maybe a little more useful. It's hard to outrun your past. Especially when you're surrounded by people who've known you really well for a long time. It's hard to make yourself into a new person who's better. It's hard to grow. It's hard to expand when everyone remembers your mistakes. And I didn't know anybody for all those years, so I didn't know their mistakes. So the one thing I was able to do is treat people as I found them. I didn't have the burden of experience with what people used to be. I could just look at them for what they were and what they want. Did you notice? I put two different things together. Now I do something new. I can approach people for kind of who they want to be and who they are at the time, not so much what they had done in the past. And, you know, that's a good thing. Of course, that can sometimes bite you in the ass, but most of the time it doesn't. You know, I made my mistakes too, a bunch of them. I know exactly how hard it is to, to try to get better and improve in an environment where everyone knows how badly you screwed up. So if that is a, a small service, that I can provide to my new community here in Houston. Uh, just that kind of new face and new voice who can give everyone a chance to, to be who they want to be, then I'll take that, you know? I think that's awesome. There are way too many people now in this town who have taught me so much, and there's no way I can name them all. Lindsay, who I talked about, between Mike Raymond, who brought me here in the first place, between anyone who's ever walked in these doors and worked, specifically now, people like Adam Scott, Stacy Gowdy, Danny Furtis, you know, all the people that are taking this kind of like shutdown virtual bar thing we're doing and uh, and working so hard to make it try to be successful. Anyone who's ever walked in the door and loved the place and decided to come and support it and to all the bars, the bartenders, the spirits professionals, the cocktail people, everyone in Houston who's been so open and welcoming to me and given me the time and displayed so much patience in trying to figure out what it is uh, that my relationship with this place is, I, I, I will say fully and formally, Thank you. You have so much of my gratitude, and I look forward to being a part of the community as long as you'll have me. So yeah, now we're up to speed. I want to thank everybody for, for indulging me in this, my, my 25th anniversary as a bartender. Again, I have learned so much from so many people, and if there's anything that I can do to pass that on to others and maybe help them, then that's what I want to do. So I'm going to keep doing these because, first of all, learning flair is a lot of fun, it turns out. Uh, as you're watching on YouTube right now, uh, please subscribe. Right here, right now, just push that button. That makes a world of difference and it helps us kind of uh, expand and grow and it helps with feedback. Look, I know it doesn't seem like it, but this video is part of the Masterclass series. There are other videos too, so so check them out. All of those lead to our podcast, which is called The Cottonmouth Club Presents. If you go to Apple Music, you can find it there. You can find it on Spotify. We also have a link right here below. There's some great conversations legendary bartenders on now. So anyone who's in the drinks business or the spirits business, I would highly recommend going to listen to them. A lot of this is just kind of our effort to take what bars do and bring it to you all at home. And so this is what we call our virtual bar. We do do a live stream every night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. We do all kinds of stuff. We bring on guests. We talk to people nationally and locally. We now have concerts on Thursday. So yeah, come check it out. Lefty. Did it. Thanks so much. I got to go practice. And but I'll be back soon to learn some more flair, tell some more stories. In the meantime, stay safe, stay separate, wash your hands, don't touch your face, for the love of God, wear your mask, and let's just get through this until we can all figure out what's gonna happen next. That's enough showing off for one day. My name's Michael Neff, and I will be back to tell you more stories and learn more flair. Be well.